Okay, right now we are going to hear from our winners. It's an amazing opportunity for us to be inspired by these young leaders who are going to do so many great things with their lives starting right now. 10-minute format, you could almost think of it as a short TED Talk style where they're going to talk to you about their idea and hopefully move you to contribute in some way that you see fit. First of all, let us put our hands together for our Young Leaders Award winner, Mr. Ankit Kawatra. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for honoring me with this award. I'm truly humble in every way. And of course, so inspired, needless to say, as every one of you is, by the great lineup of speakers that was there yesterday and today this morning. Uh, of course, the jury panel for choosing us so. And of course, the leadership of Ikhlif, Rajiv, and Atashi for getting us here together. It's amazing to be here and being among all of you. I have 10 minutes, I need to rush. So, and I'm going to do exactly that. Um, uh, before I start, I want to tell you what I'm going to be talking about. It's going to be a bit about my journey and uh, what my life has been, maybe a couple of learnings that I've had. But just before I start, I want to do a quick exercise. This is typically what I do when I enter rooms in other countries. So let's start. Um, how many of you had more than two meals of food yesterday? Show of hands. You don't, you don't raise two hands, you just show one hand, that's enough. That's fine. <laughs> Everyone, okay. How many of you, let's make this tougher, this is too easy. How many of you remember what you ate yesterday? Okay, how many of you remember what you ate the day before that? Uh, 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 what, what about the day before that? So three days before that. No? Okay, this is what I imagined, right? Well, I'll tell you, um, uh, and unfortunately, on a serious note, there are more than 800 million people who are just not like this, right? They, who do not have access to even the most basic food in the world. That's one out of every nine people on the planet. And to put it in perspective, our 500 guests uh, present uh, in this audience today, one in nine, that's almost 45 to 50 people who do not have access to basic food. My question to you is, what if you were one of those 50 people who didn't have access to food? How would you feel? Um, how would you provide your family? What would you tell your child? And that's the thing, right? Food is one of those things which is so important that we almost, almost forget how important it is, right? Isn't it? Um, and I have to confess, I have to confess something. When I was told the same story about the importance of food and the number of hungry people on the planet, many, many years ago in school, I quickly forgot it. And this largely because we're embraced with so many challenges and issues that our world faces today. You, you talk about issues such as climate change, issues such as access to basic drinking water or sanitation or proper education, and most recently, issues such as presidents of most countries. Right? I'm going to get called out for that one. But, um, um, and, I, and, I, and I honestly didn't remember this much. But one moment came in my life when everything changed. And a moment, before you start guessing, I'll tell you when that moment was. That moment was in a big, fat Indian wedding. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Indian weddings are like massive carnivals. They last over days, sometimes weeks. And they have a lot of cultural events. Uh, this is more pictures to get you hungry. Uh, but usually, uh, they have a lot of dances, festivals, and the one thing that's really common among all events is a great amount of food. So this wedding that had gone on, what was so special about it? Well, for one, I was not invited to the wedding, I was crashing the wedding, right? So I'd gone with my friends, and um, we loved the food, so we were there, and while we were enjoying this great food, uh, a thought came to my mind, a thought that comes to everyone's mind. Uh, no genius here. What would happen to that extra food that's left in the dishes when the guests had gone? So I went up to the caterer and I thought, okay, I'm not going to learn about the systems, the processes, the storage and everything. And he obviously told me, no, 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 you don't know. We throw away all this food. I was shocked. I was, how can you throw away all that food? But what was most surprising was what he said next. He said that that night from that wedding, food for 5,000 people was going to get wasted. I'm talking about the food in the dishes, not the food in the plates. Only the untouched food, 5,000 people. I came back home, I just couldn't sleep over. And I started researching and found out that every caterer and the entire food industry of India for decades has been following the same archaic practice, throwing away the excess food because there's no system as such. So I started learning, I learned about food waste. I learned that when we do not eat food, when we throw it into the dustbin, it goes to these massive places called landfills. Where it sits, it decomposes, it produces methane gas, and it damages our own environment. 
Here's a picture of a landfill which is very close to my house, uh, 10 miles or so. This was 12 stories high, and last year, this landfill had a landslide. It was that huge. Now, that wedding, when I learned about food wastage, I couldn't help but think about the irony of the situation. Hunger is not new. We all know about it. We don't need lessons on the quantity of this. But this was not just any country. I come from India. Now, if I ask most people which country has the highest number of hungry people in the world, they're usually very quick to say an African nation. And that's why I'm here to break that myth. It's India. We're not proud of it, but it's true. A quarter of the world's hungry population, almost 200 million people, come from India who do not have enough food to eat. To put it in perspective, the number of hungry people in India is more than six times the population of the country of Malaysia. Right? Um, but you know, sometimes when we, get, we talk about millions, we talk about billions, trillions, we get, we get lost in the, in the numbers. We forget what the real cause was. I had the opportunity to meet a couple of these people who were really suffering from hunger. And people who I want to point out today is one is Alamgir, a 13-year-old boy who I met on the streets of my city who would take an injection here on his left hand once every week. It was a drug. He would take that injection and then he'd sleep for a week. He'd wake up after five or six days, not having any food, completely dehydrated, and then take one of those injections again. I met another boy, Deepak, like one of the hundreds of thousands of kids working in garbage dumps because their parents were forcing them to work there. He was in, involved in no formal education, and he would segregate the plastic from the glass to sell off that plastic and earn a few hundred rupees to get maybe one or maybe two meals a day. These were people who were truly suffering from hunger. They had no food security. If they did not earn for themselves or find other solace, they would not be able to live. When I put this equation together, it was kind of obvious, isn't it? Well, first off, when you look at the slide, what do you think? Well, I think that if Elon Musk was selecting a planet to go to, this would not be it. We're so inefficient in the way we've grown, and we've been so reckless with the way we've grown. More than 800 million people who are hungry, and 30% of all the food, more than, wasted, just recklessly. So I thought, as a 22-year-old boy, let me do whatever I can. I went to all the public agencies in my city, all the private enterprises, all the leaders who I was really inspired by, and I knocked that door and I said, can you do something about it? There seems to be some flaw. Some, someone's really forgotten how to, you know, we, we just missed this. I think the last decades or something, someone forgot to take care of this. So come out and let's take action on this. And I was surprised to see that somewhere all that leadership that I was inspired by was not backed by action. The people who were respected the most, heads of companies, were not willing to take it up. Nonprofits, who I thought would be more generous towards coming towards, you know, helping people in causes, were the least involved because they were anyways so, so living on such frugal resources. I went to friends, I went to colleagues, and most people thought I'd lost my mind. Uh, a lot of people were very quick to say that nonprofits is usually the kind of work that governments should do. Social problems is not what we need to do. And I was really, really surprised. That's when I decided, I, it, it, as a 22-year-old, I was even more angry than I am right now. And I decided that I need to take action in my own hands. So I went to a Ketru right near my house. I went four times, five times. Um, you must know, I, I go uninvited a lot. So I, 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 I kept going. And finally, he, he said, you know what? This boy is not going to go. Let's give him the extra food. He's not going to charge for it. Let's let him do whatever he wants. That was the first night I picked up the first meal in my own hands, packed it in my own containers, dropped a bit in the car, and then went and donated to a family of 25. The feeling of knowing that that solution can actually be bridged. Hunger and food wastage. I didn't get it from a leader. I got it on action on ground. And that's when I realized that I wanted to do more. I wanted to feed more people. But as working in my own job, I wasn't able to do anything. I was, I was, in the entire night, I was out without telling my parents, going collecting this food. And in the morning, I was back to office, sleeping a couple of hours in, in office. And so it, it came to a very rational choice for me. Either I pursue my job or I take this up. And so the next morning, I quit my job, literally, and I started my organization, Feeding India. And quite literally. Um, well, Feeding India was very simple. I, I wanted to connect more people, so I involved the youth. I said, why not come with me, and now let's go and donate more food. So we went to restaurants, cafeterias, packed food in our own cars, and started donating it. But we, we faced a big hurdle. There was a lot of food that was being wasted. So we started another program called Magic Wheels, which was a more structured program where a, a refrigerated van goes to fixed places, like almost like an Uber pool, and it goes and picks from five or six locations, and then it feeds people on a daily basis, providing food support daily. 
But we realized that we were spending too much time on the road. So we decided, let's set up community refrigerators wherever there's excess food left. This means free of cost community fridges placed in residential or commercial areas. And anyone who has excess food, anyone can go and keep it inside. And people who need food, who are hungry, can go and take up as much as they want with dignity. And lastly, uh, in areas where excess food was not enough, uh, we, we launched kitchens, especially to motivate these kids to come back to school and parents to send their kids back to school, not send them to garbage dumps. And that's where Portion to Parchala, or Food for Education, was born. Of course, today, feeding enough from those very, very humble beginnings and uh, me quitting my job without telling my parents has, has come to a completely different life. In five years, working with more than 25,000 hunger heroes or volunteers, we now are spread in 100 cities and are now India's largest food recovery network. So we're really, really proud of that. And we've been able to serve more than 31 million meals to people in need across the country. Um, of course, along the way, we've received a lot of awards. And you know, whether it was the Queen of England or the Prime Minister of a country, Bill Gates or United Nations, but while these are the things that are spoken about more, what we're really proud of is how we've been able to change a mindset. The fact that you can go and challenge assumptions. And what Feeding India's story also goes to prove is that big problems like hunger and poverty are sometimes, they don't need big solutions. Sometimes big problems can be solved by simple and small solutions, which may or may not come from people who we most associate as leaders. So I want to leave you with this. A final thought to what comes to my mind. Leadership is not about age. A lot of people still uh, think about it as an age factor. It's definitely not about age. I leave you with a quote which I heard recently. Leadership is not about age, it's about the impact, the influence and inspiration we leave. If that was the mantra we were all following, the generations to come would be inspired by what we transfer today. So thank you so much for having me here. Pleasure being here. Thank you.